Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. South Korea's daily COVID-19 cases on Sunday um, continued the spike we've been seeing in recent days as the Omicron variant increasingly makes its presence felt here. However, the number of deaths has been on a gradual decline and the number of critically ill patients across the entirety of South Korea is now just over 400. That is down sharply from well over 1,000 uh, just a month ago. Also, as you heard from our reporter Kim Yon Sung just before, more people are now exempt from vaccine passes from this Monday. And also, despite health authorities urging the public to avoid traveling if possible, a new poll has found that around 50% of office workers insist that they will visit their hometowns over the upcoming Lunar New Year holiday anyway. For more, we connect to Dr. Alice Tan, internist at Ms. Mary Women's Hospital in Seoul. Good morning, Dr. Tan. Good morning. So let's start with the people who will travel over the holidays. They're choosing to travel regardless of what health authorities have recommended. Do you think this is down to pandemic fatigue? Well, certainly there are probably multiple motivating factors, reasons why people are choosing to travel over the lunar holiday. But I should say from the beginning that the safest way to travel and gather over the holidays will be if everyone uh, is vaccinated, boosted, and preferably tested uh, before gathering, especially if there are going to be elderly people, uh, elderly family members, or people with high-risk chronic medical conditions among those that are gathering. Uh, part of the reason might be pandemic fatigue in terms of why people are gathering, but there may be also uh, elderly parents who are living um, in the countryside who have not seen their children or grandchildren for maybe a year or two years, and they may just feel because they are near the end of life that there may not be another opportunity for them to gather with their family members uh, just because the uh, pandemic has been so prolonged. Uh, and so I, I think there are many reasons why people are gathering and, and some family members may simply need the assistance of, of their family uh, to come and visit. So. Uh, even though the gathering and mixing is high risk, I think it can be done safely. And I, as I said, VBT, vaccinated, boosted, and tested, is probably the safest way to gather. Okay, we've been reporting that the number of new daily infections is on the rise here in South Korea, but we're, we're seeing a receding number of uh, daily deaths as well as uh, critically ill patients in hospital. A two-pronged question for you, really. Is this mostly down to the increased spread of Omicron? And um, compared to Delta, how many Omicron patients are being hospitalized here in South Korea, according to the latest figures? Well, the latest figures are through uh, January 15th. And we had a total of 5,030 confirmed Omicron cases, of which there were six fatalities and seven severe cases. But we need to keep in mind that we are still early on in the epidemic curve, on the upward curve of Omicron cases in our country. And we always see a lag between new cases and hospitalizations and, of course, deaths. In terms of hospital admissions, over the last one week, there has been a significant increase already. So the seven day average of new hospital admissions for the last week was 564 on average. Compared to the first week of January, that's 100 cases higher. So uh, during that week, first week of January, there were 444 new hospital admissions on average per day. Furthermore, I'm very concerned because the number of seniors older than 60 years old uh, newly diagnosed with COVID-19, this number has gone up significantly uh, as of recently. So on January 18th, that number was 396. Yesterday, the number shot up to 749. The last reason why I'm very concerned about what Omicron will do in Korea is because if we look at what's going on in the UK and Israel, these are two countries that have actually delivered 
more booster shots per uh, population than South Korea has. And yet, since the end of December, they have seen a significant increase in the number of COVID-related deaths in their country. And so even though our uh, hospitalization, ICU cases, deaths, they are uh, kind of at a, uh, a low point right now, a trough, uh, I think it will only be a matter of time, maybe two, three weeks before we start to see uh, ICU cases and deaths increase again. Now, Dr. Tan, let's move on to vaccine passes. As we all know, you know, courts have um, overturned some of the government's um, vaccine pass mandates, especially those for department stores and supermarkets. But um, and today, from today, we're having more exemptions to that. What do you think about this? Th this? Do you um, think the system should be simplified or possibly even revoked? I, I actually am in support of vaccine passes. I think this is one way that we can keep especially high risk, risk facilities safer for the public and for anyone who's using them. I think it's one way that we are trying to live with COVID. Uh, we're trying to prevent closing down businesses, which is what can happen if there is a large outbreak. And we know uh, which businesses are high risk based on their physical environments. In other words, are they indoors in an enclosed space with crowding and, and uh, poor ventilation? And also we have, of course, epidemiological data that support which businesses have caused the highest number of cases. We know that uh, bars and clubs, nightclubs, uh, also educational facilities, restaurants, churches, these are all high risk facilities. We know because thousands of cases have been uh, confirmed from these kinds of facilities. So uh, I am in favor of the vaccine pass system, but of course we do need to differentiate you know, essential from non-essential services that are being provided by these facilities. And also we need to differentiate between risk levels as well. Um, perhaps a more simplified system could be put in place, but I don't think that uh, getting rid of this vaccine pass system is going to help our country uh, live with COVID. Right, it just seems to be coming an increasingly complex web right now with all these different uh, exemptions going on and all these court rulings every day overturning this and whatever. But Dr. Tan, unfortunately we're out of time. We appreciate your insights as always and we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.